guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and I'm so glad you joined me for another video. Today I have something fun and different and we are going to be taking just a regular 8x10 canvas and turning it into this embroidered art piece. I don't really know what you would call it, um, but that's what I'm going with. So I did the reverse canvas technique that I'm sure a lot of you have already seen, if not most of you have already seen. So I'm just going to show you how to take the canvas off the frame and then I will show you step by step how I embroidered it. I floated it on the hoop. So we're just going to go step by step um, and create this together. So I'm really excited to show you this. Two, this came in a two pack from Michaels. I want to say I got it on sale for $6.99. I don't remember exactly because I have so many of these and I got it a while ago. Um, so the first step that we're going to do is we are going to take our little pick tool. You could use a flathead screwdriver and get all these staples out and then get the canvas off. So that is the very first step. So let's go ahead and do it together. Okay guys, now normally I wouldn't do this in my room, but I've got my window open and we're about to be gone for a few hours, so I'm not worried about the the uh, smell from the stain. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stain my frame and I am using the stain Jacko Bean. This is my absolute favorite stain ever. I love dark stains. I have done several things with Jacko Bean and it is still by far my favorite. So, um, I have some nitrile gloves that I'm going to put on and then I have, um, just a rag that I'm going to use to apply the stain and I'm just using an old beach towel. It's just an old toy story towel that has holes in it and stuff. So I'm sacrificing it for the video. So I'm going to open up our can, but I'm just going to apply just a tiny bit onto my rag and then I'm just going to wipe it on. Now you could use like a foam brush with this. I've done that sometimes, but um, I still end up wiping it with a rag anyways. Um, so I just start with the rag to begin with, but I will use a brush here in a minute to get the inside. So I'll show you that in a minute. Right now I'm just focusing on the top side, the middles and the sides, and then we'll do the bottom in a minute. So now I'm just going to do the sides. Now this frame has like a little chip in it in the side, but I, I'm not upset about it or anything because I think it adds to like the rustic look. Um, so now I'm just going to take another part of it and just kind of just do a wipe down to get any excess stain so that it's not uh, like pooling up in one spot. I want to make sure it's a pretty even coat. Okay, I think I've got the inside pretty good. And so now I'm going to do the backside. So it is really fast. This um, was just the eight by 10 frame. So it doesn't, it doesn't take much. The stain spreads really well. I mean, you can see I've pretty much got the whole backside done with just dipping it in once. And I'm going to take a blank part of the rag and just do a wipe off and just make sure it's really in there. There we have it. Now it is stained and it's still wet. Um, but I, what I want to do is, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's little indentations on the inside of the wood that I can't obviously get my finger in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a foam brush and then I'll bring you guys in closer so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I actually grabbed one of our many cheap paint brushes instead of a foam brush because I think it'll reach the insides better. So what I'm talking about is these little indentations right in here. Um, I don't want them to obviously be the natural color. So I'm just going to stick in my paintbrush and just kind of paint in these, these gaps and then just kind of uh, brush around the edges and wipe it off so that it doesn't look darker in the corner so it's not uh, all pulled up. So that's what I'm going to do to all four sides. Okay, and then just make sure you're, you know, moving it around and checking all angles to make sure you got everything. Make sure you don't have any like drip marks on the back side. So make sure you always have your, your rag handy. And 
it looks like looks like I got them all so again just make sure you double check everything make sure you don't have any missed spots which I think I'm pretty good and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double check the corners because some corners have like a gap like right there so I'm just going to take my brush and just kind of wiggle it in there and then wipe the same thing you can see the the white or not white but the the natural wood color right there so I'm just going to get it with my brush and then wipe the excess okay so again I'm just going to double check and make sure I got all of the the crevices looks like I missed a spot right here okay I think this looks pretty good guys so now while this is um, drying completely, we will go ahead and head over to our embroidery machine. Okay guys, so I have not cut off the sides of my canvas yet. I'm going to leave those on just for now because I don't want to cut in too short. So just for the embroidery process, I'm just going to keep it on. And I already have my stabilizer hooped. I'm using, this is a cutaway stabilizer that I have and it's pretty thick. I don't think I need to double up on it because this is pretty thick, but I've never done this. So we'll just <laughs> see how it goes. So I'm just going to float this on top like I do pretty much everything else. So I'm just going to spray my basting adhesive and then put this on top. And I'm not gonna, I mean, I'm gonna try to get it pretty straight, but I'm not gonna be like super anal about it because I'm going to be cutting the sides of it anyways to fit around the frame or for the frame to fit around. So I am just going to lightly press. So I think that's pretty good. So there we have it. So I already have my thumb drive in my machine and I already have my first thread ready to go. So I'm just going to put this in and get it started and bring you guys in for a close up as it stitches out.
Okay guys, so I am like 99.2% happy with the final product. I will show you an up close of just the couple little things that I wish were a little different. But all in all, I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Do you like it, Sammy? Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut my stabilizer. I'm just going to cut a big rectangle around it. I mean, this is going against the wall once we hang it up, so I'm not too concerned with what the back looks like. And then now what I'm going to do... So I know there's wrinkles in it, but we'll fix those in just a minute. So now what I'm going to do is my frame is dry. So I'm just going to place it on top and see exactly where, where I like it, see where it is centered. I think that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do, here watch out baby, grab a pen or a pencil and make an outline right where I want it. So I'm just going to real lightly do an outline on the outside of my frame because I'm going to cut on the inside of the canvas. So you're not gonna see the pen mark. So now, I don't know if you guys can see that now, I have a pen line. So now I'm going to cut right on the inside of it as straight as I can. So then I'm just going to lay it on top again and see how I like it. And I think that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get these wrinkles out. So to get the wrinkles out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my iron. And with canvas, you don't iron face up. So I'm going to flip it over and iron it on the back side. And this should help get rid of a lot of these wrinkles. And just so you know, I didn't cut any of the jump stitches back here. I just left them because, again, it's going against a wall. Um, and it's just for me, so I'm not really worried about it. <laughs> So I am just going to iron this Mommy. until the wrinkles are out and I'm happy with it. What are you doing? Mm. Sammy wanted to be in here right now, so he's just hanging out with Mama. So I moved him back so that I could iron because, <laughs> you know, four-year-old hands like to touch hot things. So, okay, so now I'm going to flip it over. And make sure it's okay. I've still got a couple wrinkles right here, so I'm going to focus up here. Now, I don't have any water in my iron right now because um, you can spray it and that will help a lot better, but I didn't feel like putting water in my iron, so we are just going with it. So, I think that is looking pretty good. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I love you too, buddy. He's so sweet. Okay. So there we have it. I still have a couple small wrinkles. And like I said, I could probably get those out a little bit better if I had steam or like a spray bottle with just water. But I'm pretty happy with it. So I am going to go ahead and unplug this. And then we'll glue our frame on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take E6000 and I'm going to apply it just right on the inside part of the frame. Okay, buddy? Yeah, I scoop my chair. Oh, you're scooting closer? Okay. Yeah, that's the lid. That's the lid. Yep, that's the lid. That's the lid. It's so big. It's a little lid, huh? Yeah, and I'm not being super heavy with the glue just because, um, I mean, it's just holding on the canvas, so it's not holding like a lot of weight or anything. But I am making sure to get every bit of the inside of the frame. Okay. And it dries pretty fast, so I'm going to quickly move this over and then flip this on top. And just be real careful about my placement. Make sure it's centered where I want it. Oh, so pretty. It's pretty? You think it's pretty? Yeah. I think it's pretty too. And then the good thing about when you put it on is you can still gently slide it around if you see that it's 
you know, more on one side than the other. And then I'm just going to flip it back over and just gently pull it, press with my fingers and pull so that it is pretty straight and that it's all the way down. Thanks, buddy. You're a good helper. I'm super strong. You are super strong. Okay. And just make sure all of the canvas is touching the glue. Lift it up, make sure you like it. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it back over. And I am basically just going to press this down and hold it so that, um, so that it just dries exactly where I want it. And then I'm actually going to take, I have this little tool, I honestly don't know what this is called, but it has like two different size balls on the ends and I'm actually just going to take the smaller one and go along the inside and get the glue that is seeping out. There's not a lot, there's just a little bit. So I'm just going to wipe it because I obviously don't want that in my final product. So now instead of just sitting here and holding this, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, put some stuff on top of it to give it some weight. Some coffee mugs, these are always at some pretty good weight. So I'm just going to let that sit and then come back when the E6000 glue is all dry. Okay guys, so we are back. My frame is completely glued on. So now the last piece of business is to put on our sawtooth hanger so that we can hang it on the wall. So I have my, um, this is usually just my cutting mat for sewing and I'm just gonna be using the measurements on it. So I just have it lined up with this line right here and I know that 12 is the middle point so I'm just going to take my sawtooth hanger and put it right here and there's a dot right in the middle of the sawtooth hanger to where um, so that I know that this is centered okay so I zoomed in so that you guys could hopefully see so there's a dot right in the middle of the sawtooth hanger so I'm just going to line it up with the line that I'm going off of right here and these frames weigh seriously only a couple ounces so I would be comfortable enough just gluing the sawtooth hanger with E6000 but it comes with these little nails this is what I'm using in case you guys are wondering so I'm just going to nail it on just so it is um I don't know I guess just done correctly I guess but I would be happy enough just gluing it make sure it didn't shift at all Okay, and so now that one is on pretty good, and I'm going to do this side. Okay, and there we go. Now we have our sawtooth hanger on, and now we can hang it up. Okay, guys, so here it is all hung up. I am so happy with it. I think it looks so cute now that I actually have it hung up and on the wall. I mean, it looks cute before, but actually seeing it, you know, how it is intended to be as the final product. It is so stinking cute. So I am going to bring you guys up close even more and show you just a couple of things that I wish were a little different. Um, and then we will wrap it up. Okay, so there is just one thing that I wish was a little different. Obviously, this is a canvas and not like a shirt or, you know, regular like apparel fabric or anything. So you can see like right here and here and up here those were stitches or spots from the the jump stitches so I do wish that those weren't there obviously if this was like a t-shirt or a onesie you wouldn't see those and even then like you can still barely see them but I know they're there um so that's the only thing I wish was a little bit different but all in all I think it stitched out really well I'm really happy with this design I think it's just so cute Okay guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed, this was so fun to make. I haven't really seen anybody do it like this, so I'm really excited. Let me know if you guys have seen other videos like this. I've seen people do the reverse canvases and then do like vinyl on the inside, or like paint the canvas and then do vinyl, um, but I haven't really seen anybody do it with like machine embroidery. So if you have, send me their videos because I wanna see, because this was really fun to do. If you guys try this, let me know. Send me pictures on Instagram because I wanna see what you guys do, especially if you have a bigger machine than like the PE800 like I used. If you're able to do a bigger image, let me know because I wanna see, because 
I want to make bigger stuff. I want to make bigger signs. I think this is really cool. And I was actually thinking about doing one that has like text and stuff or like a phrase and giving it as like, like a Mother's Day gift or something. So I'm really excited about this. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you're going to try this or what you guys are going to do. And I will see you next time.